on our way to get the RV. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's been so long. It's actually been exactly seven months since we've been back in Florida. And we sold the RV in February, and now we're getting our next RV in July. That has been a long span of no RV life. And we're just so excited. I literally am in, in the seat like this. <laughs> we are on our way to a Koei. We borrowed my sister's car because we have no wheels. And we drove up to Orlando to stay with friends. And now we're driving to a Koei where the RV is, which is like 30, 40 minutes from where we're staying. So no biggie. And we're gonna bring the RV back, and drive back to St. Pete and start renovating. Sign the paperwork. It is officially ours. It is ours now. Are y'all ready for this? We're about to walk into our new to us Class C RV. Uh, this is ours. Our new home on wheels. So tell us what it is. It is a 2010 Fleetwood Pulse 24S. This is the only floor plan we found that we really, really liked, and we'll show you inside and why we love it so much. We're also gonna completely renovate it, so we'll show you our ideas and thoughts about it. This is pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty cool. Like, we, not only do we have an RV again, but I'm driving the RV. I don't have to hook it up to a truck. It's one button, pull the slide in, jump in the driver's seat, and beep beep, out of here. <laughs> I'm actually excited to see what this thing feels like on the highway, because I've only driven it right here on this little small like county road. Uh, where the dealership is so oh and by the way we're gonna be doing suspension upgrades to this thing so I'll let you know what it feels like with 46,000 miles worth of the stock suspension and then I'm sure it's gonna be a night and day difference once we do the suspension upgrades and we'll give you a video about all that so let's go get some gas all right let's go get some fuel and get back to Orlando Side approved gas station. We're getting nine cents cash back. Yeah, nine cents gallon. cash back? Wow. There you go. Anyway, Sprinter, fill spot. Yes. Depending on what year Sprinter you get, uh, between 2007 and 2009, um, they don't have DEF. It does have DPF, like our Chevy did, um, but it's kind of a give and take depending on on what your stance is. The, the pre-DEF, which is what we have, has a, the 3.0 diesel motor, but the horsepower and the torque are actually quite a bit less than if we had the 2010 or newer DEF version because they changed the heads once they went to DEF. But at the same time, I like less emissions because it's less stuff to fail on us, like what happened to us in Oregon last year. So I'm cool with this, you know, let's take it a little slower, that's all. Anyway, let's gas this thing up. So get upside is actually really easy. All you gotta make sure to do is get a receipt after you fill up, uh, and then you just scan that into the app, and that's it. So the cool thing about get upside is they're actually working with a bunch of different uh, gas station brands so you don't have to go to just one place to get the rewards. And they're usually better than whatever the gas station rewards are offering at the pump anyway. When we first started using this app, they were only in like Florida and the Southeast, but they're nationwide now. So you can literally take advantage of this everywhere. We're definitely, this is like one of the coolest things that we've found to save us money on the road, um, other than buying an RV. We get double the gas mileage right off the bat with this thing, and now we get to save money uh, for each gallon that we put in it. So that's really awesome. Got my receipt. Here you go. Let's get the heck out of here. All right. So here it is, the 2010 Fleetwood Pulse. Uh, I just want to say 
a little bit about what attracted us to this specific model and why we went with something so old. Uh, we knew that we were going to give up the idea of the Murphy bed uh, because we weren't going to be able to get away from the overcab bunk. So we kind of just accepted that and realized that we will utilize the overcab bunk and maximize the rest of the living space down below. So other things from the outside that I want to show you is the storage is maximized on the outside of this coach as well. You got a huge pass through bay right here, which gives us more than enough storage space for anything that we're going to be dragging around with wow. us. So there's an identical storage compartment on the direct opposite end of the coach. And this is another reason why I wanted to talk about what attracted us to the specific floor plan model. The entry door is in the back, the extreme rear of the coach, which actually allowed us to have the maximum amount of storage outside because every other model that we looked at, the entry was either here, which would kill this bay, or it was literally right here, so it would kill one half of the entire storage from the outside. So this just works all over the place, it works. And it's, it's awesome, I can't be any more excited that we actually ended up with this floor plan. It's so great. All right, that's enough about the outside for now. Let's take it to Liz inside and check out what it actually looks like pre-renovation. <laughs> I just love it. Right now we do not have the AC on, so we have all the windows open because we don't have plug-ins, but come inside. This is it, this is her our new RV. It's really spacious because it has one full wall slide. Um, it's really similar to what we were looking at with the Winnebago View or the Navion 24D. They have that one big slide and it really just makes the space so open and we loved that the Fleetwood 24S also had that. Um, so we have a couch. It is technically, uh, it does become a sleeper with this specific couch and it does have drawers here but it's kind of chintzy and I, we don't really like the look of it. So we're probably going to be replacing this couch and we're going to be building um, actual storage bays here where we can either lift up the couches or have pull out drawers and then just have cushions almost like a day bed, but more like a couch feel. So we're going to be replacing this. And then on the direct opposite side of the couch, we have this big open area, which right now they have like really hideous chairs bolted to the ground. We're going to be removing those as well as removing this. It is totally functional. Oh, that is like really heavy to lift up and not very fun to use, which is why we're getting rid of it. So we're going to be removing this. We're going to be removing the two chairs and we're actually going to be building a custom desk. We're probably going to make it like an L shaped um, desk so that we can actually have our files, my printer and we can work. So that's what this space is going to be. And I think it's going to be really nice when it's finished. And since we invest in real estate for a living and we do work on our RV, having like a dedicated office space is going to be really nice. I'm really looking forward to that. The next thing I want to show you is our sleeping area. So come over here. Well, yeah, because to we, our bed. the only reason we have all this space, right, is because we're going to be using the sleeper bunk. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, uh, we didn't want this at first, but then when we realized it's probably going to be what we ended up with anyways, we embraced it and it's really not that bad. So we have the ladder. <laughs> Look, go from underneath. There yeah. you go. And push straight in. There. I have to get used to that. I'll probably be the one putting the ladder on. Yeah, it's kind of tight, but it's really not that bad. We both fit up here and kind of like imagined what it would be like when we're sleeping. We already sleep pretty close together anyways, and it's like a full size bed. So this will be plenty for us. Um, I'm a little nervous about like rolling up in the middle of the night. So I don't know if we're going to do something about that or not. Or maybe I'll just sleep on the inside and have him sleep out here since he doesn't roll as much. But either way, we were pretty nervous about this, but I think it's going to work just fine. The friends that we're staying with right now where we have the RV parked in their driveway and fit perfectly, just want to mention, so nice to be so small. Um, he's over six feet and he laid up here yesterday and like had plenty of room to spare. Um, so even if you're not, you know, we're kind of small, even if you're bigger, you can totally use this space just fine. Okay. Woo. And I'm down. Oh, that's another thing I kind of want to mention, even though it looks like you're struggling with that a little bit, every single other RV that we considered having the overcab bunk 
didn't have storage space like this for the ladder. No, the ladder this is really nice. just being thrown onto the bed or yeah. on a floor somewhere. Um, we're going to be removing these from the floor. They do have like a table that can come here so that if you wanted to work here, you can. But we don't really like them. We're not going to use the table since we'll have the nice office space here. And I can just imagine us stubbing our toes. So we're going to be removing this. Okay, now let's look at the kitchen. So I actually just want to throw it out there that what you're seeing, the couch, the whole couch, and the kitchen are all inside the slide. So they all push out. The whole thing pushes out when we, when we push the slide With out. all of the storage, there's a lot of storage on this for being such a small class seat. But the kitchen looks kind of small in terms of actual length, but it is super deep. So we have a lot of workspace back here where you could easily be prepping and kind of putting the food back here as you're going, or you could be washing dishes and letting it dry back here. So this is actually a pretty functional kitchen because of the, the depth. Um, and the storage space is not bad. This is a convection micro, which ultimately one of the goals we wanna do with our renovation, it may happen now, it may happen later on down the road, but we want to actually take out this top drawer and we wanna put in an oven. Um, because with us boondocking so frequently, we just don't use the convection micro very often and we like to cook larger things. So having an actual oven on our RV is really nice. Um, so well, we do a lot of pizzas, man. We do a lot of pizzas and this ain't gonna cut it for my pizza cooking. Um, and then we're also probably going to replace this sink. We don't really love this faucet. Uh, it's also not very deep and um, it's gonna be just challenging to do dishes. So we wanna get like a washboard sink to be able to put in here and be able to dry our dishes and use it as prep space as well. And then ultimately we would also take out the micro convection and probably make this the actual cabinet since we won't need this with the actual oven. And it'll give us more storage overall. Now this one does come with a pantry, which is really nice because not all of them will come with a pantry, but the pantry itself is just really narrow. So you could definitely put stuff in here and it would be ample storage, but you're limited to what will fit here. We're going to move the cabinets over some and then pretty much just build new shelves that kind of extend it a little bit further. Yeah, we're gonna pull it out basically to the edge of the window. I think, that'll double yeah. the size, not, yeah. not all the way to the no, edge, obviously, we'll pull but, it out. but that's where the next um, support is in the wall. So we'll have to pull it out there anyway, but that'll double the size of that overall pantry and that'll be more than enough space. It'll be really light. I mean, we'll be able to fit our Instapot. We'll be able to fit our, our blender that we have and just, I mean, we cook a lot. So having a spot for all of our ingredients as well as all of our appliances, because it's not all gonna fit over there will be really nice. It is a separate fridge freezer, which was really important to us because we've heard that the all-in-ones don't freeze very well. So that this one is separated is a, a major plus. Now the bathroom. bathroom. We're probably not going to venture in too much further from the bathroom other than mentioning it is a full three-piece bathroom. So we have our toilet, which we're going to be replacing with a composting toilet. And this time we're going with an airhead composting toilet. It's slightly smaller footprint, which makes a difference in this small RV. Um, and it is more like a residential toilet where it actually has a seat, not just a lip like our, air, uh, our nature's head did. So we're going to be trying that out on this one to see how kind of compare the apples to apples and how we like it. Um, and then it has plenty of storage. Our closets are in here, which is quite large. Actually, the toilet is going to be too tall. So we're not going to be able to utilize this cabinet. So we're thinking maybe we'll be able to kind of like lift up the bottom in here so we can access what's inside. We're not quite sure, but we're going to, we're not going to waste this storage space. That's for sure. But it is important to note when you use a composting toilet, they are much taller. Um, and when we measured it, I'm just going to block it. Then we do have a full little shower. It's kind of like a tub shower combo, but it works perfectly fine. Also, one of the best parts about this is when the slide is in, like right now, it is still 100% functional and usable. So if we are in a place that we don't feel comfortable pushing the slide out, we're trying to be a little incognito, we can still 100% access the bed, couch, everything very comfortably. It also makes moving days really nice because we have a clear access to the bathroom as well as the kitchen area. So this is a major bonus. Having the slide ability to go out and give us more space is really nice but it's even better that when it's in, we still can fully live in and enjoy the RV. We are going to be painting everything in here. We're making it super fun and funky and bright. We're not revealing our theme of the RV quite yet. We're still figuring out what we're gonna start renovating first. 
we do need help with doing the woodwork. We don't have all the tools at our disposal. So we kind of have to find family members and friends that have the time and are willing to kind of help us do that. We can paint ourselves and a lot of the small stuff we can do ourselves, especially the electrical, but um, we can't really get started until we have some assistance. But we are doing a full solar setup on this baby. We're getting some new batteries. We are getting solar panels on the roof. We are getting an inverter. Um, we're also going to be installing a special hitch on the back for our scooter. We're going to be doing upgraded suspension. So there's a lot coming for what we're doing to make this rig comfortable for us and make it our own because it is totally livable. It's beautiful and it's in nice condition, but we want to kind of make it our own home and really put our personal touch on it and make it really usable for us as full-time RVers. So I did want to give you a little bit of an update for the first driving experience. Obviously, we're not at the dealership where you saw our excitement from the first time we got to get in it, uh, but we drove it about 40 minutes from Okoye back to Longwood, taking back roads. So I haven't gotten any highway experience yet, so I don't know how it's going to do in winds, but man, without suspension upgrades, this thing is already such a joy to drive compared to the massiveness of the Chevy combined with the fifth wheel. Liz is gonna totally have the ability to drive this thing, but I might not let her because it's actually that fun. <laughs> You're gonna let me. I'm gonna let you? Yeah. Okay. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done it already, hit the subscribe button while you're there and ring the little bell next to it. That way you get alerted every time we drop a new video on YouTube. And we'll see you next week.